But obviously we're going to start at Old Trafford between because they keep telling us what massive clubs United <laughs> and Liverpool are. And massive clash for half an hour, I thought, United kind of have this. They're, they're hanging yeah. in there. They're going blow for blow with Liverpool. Um, and then Casemiro gives the ball away twice and it's 2-0 and it feels like game over. It, and Casemiro, all right, he's obviously responsible. He's a scapegoat. It, it, it chimes nicely with Ugarte coming in. Mm. Ten Hag drove the point home even more by taking him on at halftime and bringing on that kid for his debut, yeah? Yeah, I think he's right to obviously blame me for the mistakes. The first the first one, I mean, the second one, he hangs on the ball too much, doesn't really scan, doesn't see Luis Diaz behind him. The first one is a terrible choice of passes that he doesn't have to make. Is there a choice to pass or does he mishit it? I mean, no, either no. way, it's his fault, but like... Yeah, no, no, he doesn't mishit it, but it's just that... Liverpool reads it well. I think he should play right and doesn't come back yeah. onto that left-hand side. Um, and then after that, there's still a long way to go for Liverpool to score the two goals. And it's still defensively not good enough from United. But of course, Casemiro is to blame there. Is it enough to take him off at halftime? Yeah, maybe. I, well, I don't think that United were much better without him anyway. But, uh, but Collier did okay. And then overall, I think Liverpool were still too good and too clinical in a sense, because we saw Zergzi with chances not taking them. There's not much in between. And you're right, for the first half hour, United were well organized. Didn't do much with the ball, but were well organized. After that, it just all collapsed. So when you break it down in terms of chances, I, I, I watched the game and then I rewatched the highlights last night. And I thought, weird as it sounds, Joshua Zergzi could have had a hat trick. Now, uh, Liverpool were dominant. I'm not saying mm, that it should have yeah, been a draw. No, I agree with you, though. Liverpool could have scored more chances. I don't know if I should be... And, and Zerk said, we said this before, is an unorthodox player. He's a different player. Yeah. Uh, he needs to be treated a, cer a, a certain way to get the best out of him. I don't know if I should be praising Zerk for the fact that he got on the end of three chances, two mm, of them no. after they're 3-0 down. No. No, so we should be slaughtering him for missing them. Yeah. Okay. Even at, even not as a clinical striker, there's chances that he has to finish. The, f the header especially. I mean, the header is in the six-yard box. Come on. Yeah, you yeah, the, header. the second one, you're right. It's, his movement is good, but it's, it's a more difficult one. The first one is not, not acceptable. All right, afterwards, people got very excited. Mohamed Salah, obviously, Liverpool, three wins on the spot, no, on the trot. No goals conceded, seven goal scorers, no goals allowed. They seem to be getting better game after game yeah. in many ways, which I think is the other thing. Um, Salah comes out, gives this interview saying that like, oh, this is my last year. And he's referring to the last year of his contract. Yeah. Uh, Some people like, oh, he's saying goodbye. But he did point out nobody from the club has spoken to me about a new deal. We'll see what happens. I'm paraphrasing here. That's yeah, yeah, but that's just, yeah. yeah. Um, I... Is this a big deal? It's not a big deal, is it? I mean, that, no, they, 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 they would talk about it. He's just saying the reality of it. Yeah, factually, he, he could not have said, I've got three more years to enjoy here. So he said, I've got one more on my contract. He might sign a new one. He might not. We don't know. He's they need to talk team. to him if they're going to do that. Yeah, and are you surprised they haven't yet? Obviously, as we've said before, Trent is also in his last year and so is Virgil. So it's not yeah. just Salah, by the, the way. The difference is that over the summer, they signed somebody who plays the same position as, as Mohamed yeah. Salah and also is Mashan, on a big yeah. contract. We're, we're going we're to break this down in case uh, uh, a little bit later on. Um, about that United midfield, Ugarte was there, not a, wasn't able to play. Uh, United got some stick because... You've been wanting him all summer. Fabrizio Romano told us like in early July that, oh, it's done. Well, not done, but you know, just about. Yeah, yeah. Were they just haggling over minor details, one million here? Would it, would it have been better, I guess is what I'm driving at, if you brought Ugarte in? Would it have been worth it to you if maybe you spend a little more and you bring him in so that he can do the whole preseason, so that he can settle in with Minu and, and whatever? Yeah, I mean, with you have done the preseason because it was obviously a couple oh, yeah, of America. Yeah. But, but still... What I don't understand is that this is a player they wanted from very early on, as we said. They also knew from very early on that PSG were not going to budge on the amount. It was 50 million euros plus 10 in bonuses because PSG bought him for 60 and they didn't want to lose out on the money. First offer from United, 35 million. There you go. Driving a hard bargain. Again, these are things that I think you, you might want to review uh, as well internally. We're going to break this down a lot more on the Gavin Jules podcast. 